Oh, you have to get in front of it. Back up a little bit. Take a view of myself. I want to tell a story that needs to be told. I want to tell the stories about women that are uplifting, that are inspiring. Some people, they still have the stereotype that women are the weaker vessel, and that's not true. Women can hold their own. I've watched Law and Order since I was a little kid, and you know, I, I, I like the way that those women have power, you know? And they look good doing it, by the way. I feel that women should look, you know, how they want to look. I mean, clearly I'm not too terribly worried about wearing makeup. I'm not wearing any now. I didn't bother to flat iron my hair. I just tossed it up in a ponytail. I don't care because this is how I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable sitting here at home on my couch in my hoodie playing my video games, and that's what I do. These are the women that you want your daughter to be like. Okay, these are not women who just fall at the knees of social convention. These are not women who just worship at the altar of reality TV. I'm sorry, reality TV. Like if you're proud of the way that you look, or if you're not proud and you're willing to do something about it, then it's not a big deal. Everybody has their opinion about something, and some just voice it. So it wouldn't bother me whatsoever because I'm happy with our, you know, our situation. So. If I wasn't happy with it, then sure it might get to me, but... No, oh, that's good. I'm lucky. I saw a picture uh, posted from a friend of mine or a page or something that I liked, and the top row of pictures is, you know, Snooki and Kristen Stewart and Kim Kardashian scantily clad and a couple of other women, and the bottom row of women were all women from science fiction. TV shows, you know, Gina Torres from Firefly, Terry Farrell, Jadzia Dax from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And the caption for this photo, for this meme, was female role models, fuck Barbie, I'm buying my daughter a ray gun. So I reposted it and I got a lot of friends that, that liked the picture and then I had a few friends of mine that disagreed with it. They argued that geek culture no less objectified women than pop culture did. And they brought up various examples, Princess Leia's slave girl outfit uh, from Return of the Jedi, or uh, Mila Jovovich's character Lilu in The Fifth Element. I wanted to talk to women individually and ask them which side of the fence they were on with all of the media culture and influences and social media that's going around today. What are you going to show your daughter? What culture are you going to raise her on? Are you going to buy her a Barbie doll? Or are you going to buy her a ray gun? If I would have been taller, I could have been Barbie. Well, yeah, we got to be there. Did you ever want to be Barbie? Oh, yeah. Every little girl wants to be Barbie, no matter what they say. Because Barbie had a dream house. She could be whoever she wanted. She had Ken, who was perfect. Everybody loved Barbie. And she's been I haven't seen Courtney in a few years. When we were trying to figure out where we were going to talk to her, she was the one that thought of going to a, a hair salon. It was her idea. There's nothing wrong with wanting to look pretty. I mean, you know, it's fun to go to the spa, get your hair done, get your nails done, have a girl's day, and then you walk out and it, it really boosts your confidence because you're, everybody's looking at you and you know they're looking at you because, you know, they like your hairstyle, they like the color you put on your nails. They want to know how you got your lips to be that color. They want to know where you, you know, bought your clothes from. And I would rather get that kind of attention than attention from somebody being like, oh, she's really smart, but, you know, she looks like she wears a potato sack. The good thing about Courtney is that she won't lie to you. She will be very, very honest, in some cases brutally honest, about what she feels and about how she thinks about certain things. I can't speak for every woman, but I can speak for myself. I like being liked. I like when people run up to me and hug me and they're like, oh my gosh, I missed you. You know, oh, I love you, you're so awesome. Like, I don't want to be in the corner by myself, you know, with no friends and, you know, sitting there reading, you know, some Lord of the Rings novel or something like that. I'd rather be in the crowd and be one of the people who's having a good time than sitting on the sidelines. Are you going to give her the Barbie dolls 
and and show her that image, you know, the, the, the stereotypical image of the, the homemaker and the Barbie girl in a Barbie world. I had a Stacy doll when I was younger and I popped the head off of it and that was fun. In many ways, June is the embodiment of the reason why I want to do a project like this. She is an absolutely amazing photographer. She has an incredible eye and she just has this way with being able to manipulate a visual image that most people couldn't learn how to do if they studied for years. When I was a kid, we went to KB Toys. I would look at the action figures <laughs> and <laughs> get stuff like Batman or Superman. I didn't feel like playing with makeup or painting my nails or planning out my wedding when I was like seven years old. Instead, I would rather go outside, ride a bike, uh, climb trees, play basketball or soccer. I mean, if I was inside, I'd be playing video games or watching TV. I want to know what women believe is the best way, the best culture to raise their children in, to raise their daughters in. I think both sides have shows that damage the culture or damage the image of women. If I were to have a daughter, I would, I mean, I would give her the option. She can do what she wants, like whatever she's interested in. She, you know, she, she just had a really, she just had a more tolerant viewpoint towards pop culture than I thought she would. And I think that was probably a, a, an oversight on my part. The next person we were gonna go talk to was Laura. I just fully expect that we're going to go in there and she's going to be like playing a video game while sitting next to something resembling Doctor Who. This is uh, my TARDIS pillow from Doctor Who. It's the time and relative dimension in space. One of my dad's favorites. He actually read the, the Thor comics from a very young age, so I've always kind of been partial to Thor. Okay. Thor. Which makes sense that I would name my cat Loki. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and also kind of, as a play on words, makes sense as to why he was originally named Thorin Oakenshee. Yeah. So, um, that's a terrible pun. I'm not going to put that in. Uh, <laughs> um, I want her to be honest. I want her to tell me exactly what it is she feels and what she thinks about geek culture as opposed to pop culture as it relates to women. Should I have a daughter, I want her to be strong. I want her to be strong-minded, but I also want her to do, I, I want her to be the person that she wants to be. So if she chooses to lean more towards pop culture and she chooses that that's what she likes in her life as long as she doesn't go overboard with it and, and let it affect her um, intelligently, intellectually, you know what I mean? As long as she um, is still her own person and not just a, a carbon copy of the rest of pop culture. If, as long as she's not just what she thinks other people want her to be, then that's fine with me. But I, I, I want her to be a strong person. I could, I could tell right then and there, it was like, yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna be different. This is going to change because at that point it, it it wasn't so sharp a contrast. It wasn't simply pop culture girls versus geek culture girls. Now now it was really becoming a gray area, and I started to get really worried about it being a gray area. Uh, so needless to say, this is not going in the direction that I was thinking. I thought for sure that there was going to be a definitive divide between pop culture girls and geek culture girls and as it turns out everybody is pretty much in the middle i don't think that with the society we live in you can place one person in either geek or pop culture i know people like to consider themselves geeky or nerdy if you will or poppy however you want to say it but i don't i don't really think if you sat people down and you say, hey, what do you watch, what do you watch, what do you watch, what are you into, what are your interests, what are you reading, you know, I don't, you know, you gather all that information and I think that's where you get them to win the line. At the end of the day, I needed a woman's perspective. <laughs> when Amelia gets older, how worried are you about how media culture might affect her? Quite worried, actually. 
I think about when I'm, well, I'm kind of terrified of having her be a teenager anyway, because even good girls are kind of scary when they're teenagers. But I, I do worry a lot, and I, like, Rob and I have these discussions all the time. We just will do the best we can to make her confident and tell her how much we care about her and we love her and how strong of a person she is and things like that, just to try to build up her confidence. I was really excited to talk to Nicole and Amelia because I wanted to see firsthand the, the motherly perspective, especially from hers because she's still going to school and she still has definitive goals that she wants to accomplish in her life. I think the strongest influences we can raise her with is just ourselves. Having strong morals and trying to raise her in a positive way and yeah, we know she'll be exposed to those things. We already expose her once in a while. I'll watch certain shows with her and th certain things, but um, just trying to be have a stronger influence than the pop culture type things, which is really hard. I don't honestly, I don't know if it's even possible. It depends on the kid you have and and how she grows up to be too. But that's really all we can do is just try to be stronger influences than all those outside things. Do you have any preference on whether or not you want boys or girls? I do. Um, in the perfect boys. world, I will have two girls and two boys. Oh, and it's, and it's, I <laughs> in, the, in the perfect world, and it will go uh, girl boy, girl boy. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, no, other way around. Boy, girl, boy, girl. In the perfect world. But who knows, we'll see after one pops out and how I'm feeling. Talking to both of my sisters was an opportunity for me to learn things that I didn't know already about them. If I were two. <laughs> Two's my minimum. It would be best if they were twins. I didn't get them out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a preference? I want boys. You want boys. Why yeah. Do you want boys? Well, they just have it a lot easier than girls do, I feel. I'm not gonna lie, I am biased because you know I have my mother and my sisters and you know all of my aunties and you know so many cousins and just women have influenced my life enough to for me to know for me to be smart enough to know that they're there for a reason. Um, I think for me, just definitely being um, that positive role model for her and having a positive relationship with her. You know, just so she could see, like, oh, my mom's awesome. You know, she's a teacher, and we do this together, and do that, da 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 da. As far as toys, I probably would, you know, buy her Barbies and dolls, and you know, and if she didn't want that, I'm not gonna say, well, no, I'm not gonna get you the the yeah. Lego set, you know. But but if she wanted a Lego set, then okay, I'll get you a Lego set. I was already kind of hoping that the interviews would go a certain way, and then when they didn't. I had that little, had that little mood of like, yeah. like, no, no, just, just, just go down the line, just go down the line. I was creating the box, the box that I was fighting against, I was creating. When I talk about how you, you can't fit women in a box and give them a specific designation, I was doing that. I was giving them a designation. I was calling one side of them geek, and I was calling the other side of them pop culture. I was putting them in boxes and I didn't even realize it until I started talking to them and I started listening to them and I realized that it's not about the boxes. It's about breaking the boxes. It's about acting like the boxes don't exist, even if they do. I thought that I would learn a lot personally from these women. I didn't realize that I would learn that much about myself as well. You know, if media culture is gonna continue going the way that it does, what hope do women have? Women have lots of hope. I think it's a matter of less being less bitchy and being problematic and dramaful and getting on the same page and uplifting each other. And I know people have said that, but like that's something that has to happen because society says what? You have to get married and you have to produce kids and that's your life. You know, and that may have been how things were done, but that's not how things are done now. Women are becoming more aware of what they like and what they want, and they're not afraid to go out and get it. And through all my experiences, if there's one thing that I could tell anyone, you know, 
to someone coming up behind me is don't be afraid you know go for it <laughs> if you fall flat on your face go for it because the la at least you can say i tried i might have failed but i tried and i still got up and i did something different but i tried it might not have been for me but i still tried